Hello everybody and welcome to the BTS series Europe. We've got some games on our hands ready to go. Let's get into it. We've got Cookies vs. The Puck Puck. Cookies is a team you've probably heard of containing some of the members of X Lemon Dogs and also Keizu, who's uh, kind of famous from Heroes of New Earth. And then the Puck Pucks are more of an up and coming team. I'm Lava Down Under. I'm going to be joined by PQ. How are you doing, PQ? Pretty good, thanks. So, yeah, but we've got a best of three in our hands to see who can Ten advance. Seconds. This is the first Remember. round of the EU series, so let's, let's get into it. Now, we've got an AA Radiant picked in the back. first round. It's been a while. It's just something that they're obviously going to use the Elves Chan. It's Personally, I wouldn't pick it up so early because it's very exploitable pick. It gives some um, very choreographed lanes that Cookies can then exploit quite easily. Remaining. But do you at the end of the day, if it's what they're comfortable with, it works. Do you think it's super necessary against Chen with those changes in 6.86D where the cooldown is no longer back. so short with the Ags? On Hand of God? If they get something like Wipe or DK and they want to group up really early, then I think A is really good if he can manage to get his 6 and kind of nullify their timing. But now they're allowed to draft around it. The Venge, the carry might not be the go-to anymore. They might rather just throw Ten it as a support, use the Chen to control the lanes and get an advantage in the early <laughs> game. And they can adjust their strategy accordingly. So I think they kind of showed their hand a bit too early. I definitely agree with that. It does feel like when you pick the AA up so early, as you said, it's exploitable and there's ways to play around it. But the Puck Puck go with the Quap. Also, we got a bunch of bands out. Obviously, Zeus gets banned out because he's a strong mid laner and also has global potential with the AA. You know, so easy to pick a Spectre up after that. And also Viper and OD. So the Puck Puck pretty concerned about winning this mid lane. You know, they're both just really, really strong early game fighting heroes that do well in their lanes, so smart bands. Do you actually know anything about this team like at all? I've heard of a few of them through pubs, but I've most never of, seen them play. Most of the players are people I've, as you said, just seen floating around. I'm not sure if this is their first team on the Puck Puck, but it's certainly they're a much newer team. They're not one where I've seen them competing in a bunch of other tournaments. Unlike Cookies, who have been around, I think... Uh, couple weeks before the major qualifiers. Yeah, it's been a few months now, if so. I recall. Maybe a few different players who are there. I didn't know Pablo was with them for a oh, while. Pablo's, but... yeah, Pablo's been with them. Um, I I swear the drafter has rotated, but I think that's actually pretty normal on these teams that are still finding their feet. So, but Most people tend to draft as a team. It's not so haterish these days. Either way, we're going to be seeing Cookies have an opportunity. Now, there were some other things early on in the bands. Obviously, Io was banned out. A lot of teams, full stop, are powerful with the Io. Cookies banned it out. I don't know if they had some intel we didn't on the Puck Puck, but I know Cookies themselves love running the Io, so I think that one was interesting. And they get a Nature's Prophet, which, you know, in the hands of a good offlaner, Nature's Prophet's going to have a blast. Yeah, that hero does a lot to your safe lane. Wish Doctor's fairly good at it because you can generally stop him messing with the creep room too much. So I say that he can just double treants and then you can't really stop it with any support. So he's going to get something from his lane. And if the Chen ever manages to rotate there, the supports are both fairly squishy. It's a fairly exploitable situation. Yeah, I, I really like this Chen pick up. Obviously the Chen is really strong right now. I'm wondering how effective it will be against Quap, a hero that's a lot harder, I feel, to gank in the mid lane than, you know, a lot of mid laners, if it was the Zeus, if it was someone like the Lina, even she has to sometimes put herself in a bad position or the Invoker. Quap can quite frequently just blink away. Do you think the Chen can have effectiveness there, or will he be forced to go elsewhere? For the most part, I think he'll look for ganks in other lanes, but say he gets a Sator Creep or the Harpy, he just sends some mid, harasses the Quap, helps whichever mid laner he decides to pick up. Yeah, and we've seen that Sator. Will... Yeah, like that's all he's 
gonna look to do mid, I think. If he manages to get a gank up, it might be with something like an Ember pick, but I don't think it would be a focus on this game. Unless they do some cheesy shit where like they make the pot blink, Prophet TP's in, she doesn't have tangos, like, they catch her out, but then you're probably diving towers. Yeah, if if she blinks in aggressively, I think most co-ops at this level know that unless you 100% can get the kill and know where everybody else is on the map, you can't blink Ten in aggressively. And it's so hard to do that with the introduction of items like Fairy Fire. Five seconds remaining. Fairy Fire is a really nice like, man-up item. I really like it. In a good addition Reserve to the game. Time. So, we've got Faceless by the Puck Puck. Always a strong offlaner. I... It does feel like maybe Avenge Chen and someone else could burst down the Faceless Void before he gets off the time walk, but he's generally a real pain to deal with in lane. You're not knocking him out. I think they'll be okay. Especially with that pick, because he's like sure burning here. I'm sure you can time walk like one nuke, but 30 second cord, and you might be staying over one for quite a while. Depending on like. How much they prioritize moving the Chen up there, maybe Ten seconds, don't go correctly, or he gets, like, just sap 6B. You, you can always hide in the Five trees, seconds, it's something a lot of offlaners don't do these days, but definitely work. And if he manages to get his level 6 around the timing where Chen wants to group up, say maybe he gets level 5, profits in and around level 6, they can really screw them up with a good Void ult. They are going to have to have a lot of damage coming out from the supports, because right now it's just the cop. The supports are underleveled, they're going to have a really hard time going through a mech at Hand of God. Probably like a fairly tanky Knight's Prophet and Venge who are going to go like Treads, Wands, maybe even a Drum. I Need some damage. I think this is... From Cookies, I mean, this is a best of three, so they're showing their hand very early, but they're running a very clear push strat, and remaining. right now, unless the Puck Puck picks some, I mean, they could go for the Gyrocopter, potentially, that would help with a lot of these creeps flying around, but I'm not sure that they're going to have early wave clear Reserve here time. for all of these units. Yeah, they've opted to just go for the fight instead, because right now, if they do hit like a 5 on 5 bash, Regardless of the next two heroes, I'm pretty sure, unless like it's something like a silencer, which would be really weird from cookies, but I doubt that. They will win the fight if their supports get good levels in the lane and they use their spells correctly. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I think this Viper ban out by the Puck Puck is really smart because cookies had already shown they're doing a bit of a push and, you know, Viper just making Ten sure that you win that lane, remaining. always a good thing. So, I... They have, a, they have the luxury of last pick right now, so they're gonna find out what this hero is. I'd imagine it's something that can fight early, or they're just gonna go like complete push. So I wouldn't see Spectre being the best option, just because very little synergy with Void, slightly weaker lane, but it kind of does what they want, so it's alright in a sense. There's also some good pickoff potential here, right? With the global A blast, and then if somebody does happen to be low after you throw one of those, or maybe Quap lets someone get away with just a little bit of health, Spectre can haunt in, secure the kill. This draft is really going to depend on how they do in their lane, so like, if the supports get their camps messed with by the Prophet and they can't pull in their stock bottom, maybe they pick like, like a Dragonite's a roamable mid, but not the easiest thing to kill and there's possibly a champ behind him, so if the supports get screwed this game, I see their draft falling very, very far behind very early. And if it does that, I don't see them coming back so easily outside of like really, really big chronos. Hopefully, you, you wouldn't walk into with like more than two heroes. Yeah, I mean, as much as you say, obviously, Cookies' draft peaks a lot earlier. I have We've seen a few times success with the core Dragon Knight. I do agree it's really difficult and it's certainly something they need to be careful about because he peaks a lot earlier than other heroes but I wouldn't say it's impossible if they try to build Ten him as a more remaining. carry Dragon Knight. It'll just be 
I mean, I just don't think they should with their lineup. Their lineup could take a Rax at like 15 minutes in. Yeah, the Dragonite pick was really strong, honestly. I think part or something like a TA or just something that fought while well, Synergize is really well with the lineup. It makes a lot of sense. And it, it's going to have a fine time mid. It doesn't really care what he lanes against. Will be relevant as soon as he hits level six. Hell, maybe even at level four if the Kang comes in with two centaurs or something. A DK stun is enough to get a kill, especially with uh, the Raster. Yeah, we haven't talked. assisting. We haven't talked about it too much, but obviously the Venge is an excellent carry here. She's going to buff everybody up, and you just don't. I mean, there's not a good solution. You could kill her off, but then she gives you the negative aura. And while she's alive, she's giving her whole team the Vengeance Aura. Chen does so much more work. The Treants do so much more work. It's just good all around. 30 seconds to battle. And she's just a nice, simple hero. You can't really go wrong with it. Yeah. So. Looks looking... like Kezu's going to get his ward uncontested, which is going to make his lane even easier. Which I think is a big problem, actually. Like, he should not be allowed to get wards like this for free. Especially when they should realize he's going to be able to cause them some problems. Maybe they don't quite the battle rate the Prophet offlane, they think they're going to zone it straight away. I I'd be surprised if he doesn't get a lot here. Just because he's already doing it with the creeps where he's going to try and disrupt the wave. Casket's wasted on one, so he's definitely going to be able to pull it. Yeah, and he's got... A lot easier. He's got a lot of good vision, as you said, because of that ward. If they do contest this or pull this camp, because that's something you can do, you can pull it down here. He's got easy ways of contesting since he's a nature's prophet. Kezu should be fine. Now this mid matchup, obviously the co-op has some good harass, but it's a DK. Once he starts getting points in that dragon blood, do you think he'll be fine? And bottle throwing? Yeah, he'll just crow till his heart is content. And um, co-op shouldn't have any problems CSing unless she misses some under the tower when it gets like aggro like this. Fortunately she is, which is kind of a big deal, but regardless, Vine should be fine on her end. As long as the DK's not level four or five depending on his skill build, she doesn't have anything to worry about. As long as she sees Rasta on the map. Yep, and uh, DK Eskil no fear just going right up and smacking Quap in the face. Very aggressive play here, but as you said with the bottle, with a point in that dragon's blood, he can afford it, and up on top. The Faceless has hit level 2, so even though he's getting some harass here, he's in a good spot. Hopefully gonna have a good game for Puck, because I think he, he really needs to get level 6 by the time they do something. If they can constantly use Chrono to set back the pushes, it's gonna really stomp what they want to do. Yeah, obviously. Not the easiest thing to do, though. Obviously, pickoff's kind of the name of the game here. They're going in again, but he'll just time walk it off. They go for the grip afterwards. They do not have the damage, but they're expending a lot to harass him. I'm a little surprised by this. I mean, he's already almost level three. I don't think you can harass him out anymore. Well, he has no regen anymore. So if he gets caught once more after a time walk, he's gone. And the rest is claritying up. It doesn't really cost too much on their end. Much better than spamming pulls or getting greedy. Because as I said, they should recognize his void's going to be a problem. If he's getting levels, it's one thing, but he's not getting any CS, which is very important. Yeah, he... Okay, while well, he's hit level 3, he probably will start getting zoned a bit harder. Now he has no regen. And as you mentioned, no regen. Shen could come out, although Chen right now... He does actually have the Satok Reap. He's choosing to make sure he's getting equivalent levels to both offlaners. Hey, he's got this one, Creep going mid. Gonna make the pop very unhappy. And DK has a regen rune in this mid lane. DK is actually doing very well. He's 11 and 2 to the Quop 12 and 6. Was expecting Quop maybe to have more, and Quop quite low. Doesn't have a bottle charge, and yeah, takes another dragon fire to the face. The thing is, she can never really play too aggressive, and that's just because of the Chen. I'm not even sure how bad it is with the new Dragon Blood. It might just be impossible to ever get him in kill range until you get level 6. By the time he gets level 6, 
Sports are probably moving around. He might even just be stunning you and killing you at that point. Okay, that smoke was just... They smoked the supports to go and kill the DK. Again, the Dragon's Blood will kind of be the defining factor. Also, the fact that we've got two smokes going at the same time, although it does look like Cookies' smoke is going top for the Void Kill. If Eskil is caught out here with the Chilling Touch, they might have enough damage to bring him down. But they he's going to run it off. Down, and the smoke is and going for going for a gank when like the rune's just about to spawn is kind of you're hedging all your bets that the oh, enemy isn't no. just gonna run to the rune. Void will be our first blood. Hadoken creep comes around. They even bring in Keizu, and this probably signifies going for the push. Or oh, Keizu will just wait out that cooldown and head back down bottom. Gum, gum. They definitely could push. I wouldn't be surprised. Bit of early gold infuse is very nice. Get Rastra's Arcanes, Chemwall, those to whichever route he decides to go. If they force TP's top, then it's something the supports aren't doing in the woods. Like, they're not pulling right now, instead, they, they're actually getting dived. Yeah, slight pressure taking damage here. Pablo Gaming going in deep, gets off the grip, and the Hadoken Creep not quite able to seal the deal. They're gonna lose the Shadow Shaman. Kiro now walking forwards. That time dilation should be wearing off right about now, but Quap has come in with her level advantage. And this overextension, they've been punished heavily for it on Cookies. They d will get the tower, maybe. It might be denied. Oh gosh, they have to Radiance play this one very tower. carefully. The Treants make sure they get it. Treants hit like a bloody truck. Meanwhile, DK is sitting in mid, so despite the fact that we lose two heroes there, uh, it's not the worst thing. They get an objective out of it. Let's say it's fairly even exchange. And Quap actually falls quite further behind the DK. Part of that's the tower gold. Part of that's that while she was gone, he got about 14 CS. Oh, three, a couple CS up on her. Sorry, five CS or so. There she has a role, and Void's probably going to have a bit of an easier time top, unless they do what they're doing now, which is pulling the wave back, so they're going to try and keep it right under the tower regardless. Or if Flames is just murdering the AA. Rip AA. Yeah, I think underestimating how hard the Venge hits with one point in that wave of terror and the Vengeance Aura. I think he just got caught out and was just... Trying to his way to victory? Uh, survival. Maybe it would be victory, you never know. 100% I'm yeah. actually kind of surprised how high levels of sports Radiance are over on the fuck side. Like, they're both level 4, the Spectre's about to hit level 6. I didn't expect them to be doing this well. I think the kill involvement really buffed them up. You're not wrong, there was a lot of... I mean, there's also been a lot of pulling. They got a little bit of kill involvement. We're having a go on the mid, but this isn't going to latch, as you said. That buffed up Dragon's Blood. It is so hard to get a kill on a DK. Yeah, Shred's wand. 1100 HP. What more can you ask for? Now he's getting his ult up. I would expect them to maybe go bottom. Unless they want to try and go mid. Kill on the claw. I think putting spec in any kind of pressure is much better than caring about what the plop's doing. We haven't talked about the Spectre the much at all. Tower. Because yeah, these lanes... Just... The, the lane's just been pretty uneventful down there because of the pulls and the nature's profit left, but as you were going to say, the Spectre's farming really well. Second on the net worth when you're seven minutes in as a Spectre, that's good news for t uh, the Puck Puck. Yeah, I think this is where it's going to change if the gank works. It looks like they are but preferring mid. And they might just go, like, around through the jungle. <laughs> From the looks they of can things. take the safe lane tower. I think it's much better than going mid. Just because if you can manage to do anything to the Spectre early, it's like, it snowballs. But I think Spectre, he got scattered out in the woods. Yeah, he's going to get... I think one of them may have, but the Spectre also almost runs into them with no dragon form. Eskil can't get off the range stun, and here comes the push, as you said. The pressure is on. That's really important, though, that he didn't die. If they'd have killed him and gotten his safe lane tower, it would have been a very good smoke gank. Now it's just eh. It's a four-man movement. Yeah. Not ideal, because you're putting a lot into this. 
they can manage to like kill the Venge top or something, it doesn't look like they're going for anything like that, so it's unfortunate, but it does do expect there's some more free time. It does feel a bit like that smoke amounted to nothing. Oh, the tower's still good. Like, but you it, didn't need to smoke for that. Yeah, but they're obviously hoping for the kill. It's just what you get at the end of the day. And they will keep pushing. They have a number of those dark troll summoners, so the push will be real, will be coming in hot. And let's see what else. They're going to poke at the tower. I've, the DK decided not to go back attack. mid. And I don't know if the Puck Puck can stop this. Without the levels on the supports, I think it's vicious. So we all get half damage. Oh, the Haunt comes in. Eskil is being gone on. Sestile's already gone for the TP out. Eskil may just end up being the sacrificial lamb here. He goes down. They, they may just pick up the AA though, and the tower's oh. probably not going to get denied. It goes to the chain creep, so I think they'll take that. Two towers, one for one. I'm a they little didn't get surprised. The Spectre, but... I'm surprised they got the AA there, but Nature's Prophet on point, and Cookies taking that tier 2 puts them up to about a 3,000 net worth advantage. And, and now what they really need to do is, as soon as DK spawns, go again. Hope to god these level 6 out on the AA and Witch Doctor, because they're sharing a lot of experience right now. If you can take another tower before that window, I think that's your game plan for the next 2 minutes, pretty much. They're nearly level 6 on the chain as well, but I hope he doesn't wait for it and they just go. Could be a much better plan. Boyd does have Chrono, but they have no follow-up right now. The pop is also on down. Why did we have to go tier 2? Ooh, a nice Good knight coming out from the Witch Doctor, so that'll set them back some. Taking some gold out of the game that Cookies can never get back. I feel... The long cooldowns on the Puck Puck, they can really take advantage of this on Cookies. You mentioned the Quapult's down, knowing that the Haunt is down as well, because that's another really long cooldown. You can just Kill keep pushing. Spectre. Oh, and now, as you said, they get the stun out onto the Spectre. There's going to be a Shackle with her name on it, and the Breathe Fire finishes her off. This is just, I mean, there's not a lot of space for a Spectre to farm right now on this map. Um, That's why I was kind of not favoring it in the draft, because as soon as something like this happens, your woods are completely exposed. The die have like perfect vision of every camp you want to be farming. If you're not in one of the camps in vision, they can kind of deduct, okay, this is where you probably are, and they can still just go and annoy you. It, now they've at least got a blast, they've got Haunt up, they can contest this rush, and this will probably be like their big way of getting back into the game, yeah. if it goes well. As you say that, the AA Blast will end up hitting Flens, trying to try to run out of there. Someone's getting Chronosphere, there's a big three-man one, but immediately the Hex comes out. It may not be enough, the Coconuts are flying around. They managed to disable the Faceless Void, he's still not dead though. And the Death Ward, four dead on the side of Cookies, and now they're going to get to farm up those wards. Chronosphere wasn't even used there. Radiance bottom this has gone horribly wrong. Yeah, yeah, that rush was, in my mind, very ambitious, but... They, they had no mech, they only really had like, the wards to do it. Did they even smoke in? Oh, I didn't see. I don't think they, they smoked in, the but desert? they weren't seen. It's just, it was an they obvious rotation, given the stage of the game. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's very choreographed. And sorry, they do have a mech, but they were fighting without it because Kezu went top. Yeah, Kezu went top, has been A, blasted. I don't think Void has the damage, but still relieve some pressure on this top tower push and that last fight in the Roshan pit 3k gold swing pretty much negates all the tower gold that has gone the dire's way it doesn't negate the map control so the game is still heavily in their favor i would say if they can keep up the pressure but if they happen to give away multiple kills every time void alt and a or another support alt is up with spectre then they're gonna start falling really far behind really quickly. While they do have like the control of the woods, it's very easy for them to overextend once or twice. Suddenly this clock with an Aegis comes in, kills two or three of your supports, and you're thinking, uh, they're a bit too big for us to fight into now. 
then yeah. you'll be dead for like 30 seconds, the ults are nearly cooling down again, Chen has to go for his creeps, and it all just kind of becomes a clusterfuck, and you're in a rush. They've gotten themselves into a bit of a pickle because they're now behind an experience, but they still have an overwhelming push lineup. The Haunt is up, the Quap Bolt and the Chronosphere are both down. So perhaps Cookies can get this tier 2. Without an Aegis, how do they siege high ground? But now they fallen. don't. I think they're doing the right thing, just dropping wards, securing more map control. They're going to rotate top to deep push this. If they can get a kill, it would be great. Chances are very slim though. We'll see. They're wrapping around onto the Quap. They also... Oh, the Faceless Void is about... They're actually going to go for this. So they may end up going down. The Haunt reveals where everybody is. Kiro, they need to disable him. They do. They manage to pick off the Faceless Void. Quap now standing around, not in a good spot. They're going to see exactly where she blunked to. Can they get the stun up in time? And no. Flynn unable because there's no how. So they get a quick pick. Yeah, that's surprising. It was very, very obvious how they moved, but that's going to probably allow them to go for the tier 2 now. Void down for 15 seconds, his Chrono's up, but I will fall before he spawns. They're not getting any trades either because the Prophet's pushing up bottom. Joy of having the global teleport. Yeah, Kezu doing a good job, even though maybe Radiance sometimes him not being with the team has hurt them. Oh, okay, Faceless comes in again, wants to use that ult. He could potentially get off a really good one here, but they've disabled him the whole time. Doesn't matter, though. They're just going to kill off the disablers, and now Chronosphere comes out onto the vent. Kezu has come in, but he is going to most likely fall at the end of this. Flens going down. They still somehow have the vent alive. She takes out the Faceless Void, but now she's fighting up against the Witch Doctor. On the other side, the, they have lost the Nature's Prophet, and Flens TPing out in sight. There is a scream, unable to get it off before she escapes. That's pretty nice. Another. But it's a very, very bleak situation. Despite the fact they've taken like all their towers, they're still losing these fights with a lineup that is designed to fight at this stage of the game. And I think the biggest reason they're losing these fights is just lack of coordination. When they go for that void kill, it doesn't do anything for them. It's a nice kill to have, but they know all the ults are coming up. Okay, Haunt was down, but they had every other ult, and you didn't have your mech with you, and it was also on cooldown when he did TP in. I think another big problem, of course, is that lost Roshan fight. That put them behind in experience. They're now fighting from a place where they don't have the advantage on cookies. This lineup can still definitely work, but as you said, superior coordination is needed. And slight pressure being chased here, but unable to catch. He has the same items as Avenge, pretty much. That That's very sad to see. Those... Red drums, Wish Doctor. It's also very weird, actually. Yeah, the Spectre also has drums. I'm a little... No, I like that, but I'm, I'm just surprised the Wish Doctor didn't go for something like a Glimmer Cape or just straight Axe. I suppose he's got the money, so any extra ability to fight is good at this stage if they can last out until Spectre gets guessing he's going Radiance with yeah. the amount he's saving up then they'll feel a lot safer. She's actually gotten quite rich a few times in this game and I think now deciding to go for the Radiance. Dyer's middle tower is yeah, this is like gonna be make or break point of the game. If they manage to get their axe here then suddenly the few mistakes they've made it's all kind of validated because they got something for it. If they don't manage to get this and... Get the oh card, goodness, the A lost off the mark. They've got the stun out onto the quad, but again the Death Ward is flying. They don't seem to have anything to stop, but they do manage to use the swap to stop slight pressure from going in. They've killed off one. Can they find more? The Chronosphere at the ready and the wards are almost dead. Eskil still has quite a while on that Dragon's form. And it's Maybe looking like they get a tower. There's no follow-up to the Chrono. I expect I can't follow up a Chrono at all, because obviously she's a melee hero. Are under yeah. The range racks getting low, Quap coming back in. She does have that Aghanim Scepter, so she should be able to get a good kill here. Spectre haunts... Did she haunt into the Chronosphere? Yeah, Either but they way. got the buyback from Quap, so that's yeah. alright. Not really, she had one. That saves their racks, which is very important. 
And now they're gonna be off the mark on Pablo. Speaking of Pablo, he is about 300 gold away from that Aghanim Scepter. So if they leave those racks unattended for a moment, he's coming in for them. Yeah, it's looking like they might be able to brute force it in 40 seconds. Even if, if they do. To farm the actor. Even if they do, will this Spectre, having a Radiance almost, care about being a Rax down? Because the jungle. I don't think so. Because by the time they can go for the second Rax, they're probably going to want Aegis and a few more items, maybe. And then it's just going to, you know, let Pop do her thing. She can cut a few people because of her ult. AA is going to be level 11, maybe even Wish Doctor is going to be level 11. Oh, they're like going in onto up. the Quap, and she is blown up. That's a dieback. Dragon Knight showing off that Blink Dagger. He doesn't have much, but he's got a Blink Dagger, and he was able to make it work. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, Blink DK is uh, really strong. Yeah, we haven't and touched I guess this is just the cue to go again. Is probably Rax. Uh, yeah, no Chrono for 20. They, if they've marked it, they should feel very confident just walking off here, which they do. And this is going to be a Rax. They can maybe put some damage on another tower. Eskil will take an Ice Balls to the face. He doesn't have the DD anymore, but still, of course, that Dragon Form. So powerful against towers. There's going to be a swap under Slight Pressure. They immediately blow him up, and these wards should be able to hit the melee Rax. Which Doctor buys back, but they know that Quap cannot, even though she's coming back up in a second. They should be able to get some good damage on the melee. I mean, they have to get this. The aggressive jump forwards by Eskil. Now there's the haunt coming out in the back line. There is going to be a death ward fully channeled onto Eskil. He blows up. Flens tries to get out. Does manage to before the chronosphere goes. So they'll only get death style. But they lost a melee rax in the middle there. And now Quap will pick off Pablo Gaming. But for a full melee rax. Yeah, they'll take that any day of the week, I think. Two racks. One racks, I think, was completely doable because they were investing a lot into it and kind of made about even on gold. But when they defended the top racks and gave away, like, oh, sorry, when Quickies went and, like, they got a few kills on top of it, it just. That little too much to do. As soon as your ults won't cool down, they just go again. You didn't have anything for the second time, and you didn't get anything for the second time either. It's not like your Spectre got a tower, or he did this time, but the time before, etc. Now it's just Radiant Spectre against the team that has the net left to deal with him, because they have the Chen heal up. They've got the mech. They've got Necro 3, which can do a lot of work right now. This is where they are strongest, despite a few mishaps. But they're going to find the AA as well. This could be a big pick for them. The AA stands in the way of a lot of their pushing potential, and they get it. Will they be able to get a push off in the 30 second death timer? I kind of don't like that he used his ult though. It, it's a reaction, but they, they could definitely hit the racks in 30 seconds. They can just go now. You, he has buyback. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think of that. You're right. It, since he has buyback, it. Completely yeah, this playback is 100% irrelevant, mm -hmm. pretty much. Okay, the Ice Vortex is nice in fights, but, you know, it's 10 seconds away. Not Dyer's half of the hero. Yep, they are melting through this tower. The wards will be able to hit the melee racks again. The Haunt does come out, bringing people quite low. The Spectre thinking about going in. The Chronosphere is at the ready. The Sonic Wave comes out. Kezu is already dead. And they managed to, on the back lines, catch out Eskil. He's going to take a lot of damage here. The A Blast actually flies on through. Kezu is, oh, Eskil is hit. So that's unfortunate for him. But they're going on the ranged racks. Actually, the wards can't hit it, so they're kind of split. So they won't get either here. Oh, they might actually get the ranged racks. I spoke too soon. Now they're working on the melee with these dragon illusions. And they are just two racks away from Megas on the side of Cookies. The rest in it, he does have a blink as well now as soon as he gets to the side oh, to fire. They hex up the Quap. Do they have the damage between them? They do have a lot with the Venge, and it looks like Quap is going down again. Pablo Gaming may pay for this. As may Flens, can you get the time bash? Not able to. And now, despite the rest is dead, he has his blink, he has Ags. If Either of these racks are ever left unattended without backdoor protection, they're dead. Obviously, there's clip as well, but. 
Oh, Kezu is actually being caught out by the Faceless Void. A couple time locks happening there. AA now coming in as well. Kezu pops that mech. A lost flies. He's going down. I don't think it really matters, but it's a completely unnecessary kill. Being a bit over aggressively. Maybe it was even in Vision of the Ward. I didn't quite see where he TP'd, but. Very aggressive general vicinity. He was trying to poke that away. That a lot of money, actually. He just bought his blink. Now 1800. Yeah, it's gonna make the initiations a lot easier for the Puck Puck, but I'm pretty sure that was just them attempting to get this ranged Rax in mid. We didn't talk about it, but I showed it. They got half of its health on that push, like two pushes ago. Pretty dang good exchange for cookies. They're still in trouble because they're up against a Spectre, but she's not the best of wave clearing heroes. So yeah, they can just rat now. Like all they have to do is keep the lanes pushed in, not give up like three, four man chronos, put the lanes, get one rack with Rasta. As long as he's not showing, like he could smoke, his team could go die as four heroes, rinse repeat twice, they've won the game in the end. Just how little they give up to do it. Very easy for them to finish this off. Spectre does have the Radiance though. It's going to rip right through those supports. Even though the Shadow Shaman has an Ags, he's still pretty squishy compared to that Radiance. And Chen also having an Ags, but of course the cooldown is no longer just no time at all on Hand of God. It's only level 8, so the ult's okay. pretty pitiful. They get the aggressive jump forwards onto Quap again. If they bring her down, no, the Chronosphere onto 3. You talked about this being the problem. But where's the follow-up damage? There's going to be a Sonic Wave. A Haunt comes out as well. The Hand of God is still on the ready. Can Steph Style get it off? He dies. No, he's unable to because the cooldowns are locked. And now Flens looking like he's going to get blown up. They've already gotten 3, and they are looking for more. Nobody is pushing away here. Flens going to fall. Oh, and Keizu is dead too. Yeah, that's exactly what they need to not have happen. But th they can still deal with it happening one or two more times. If they manage to get Roche on like Pop or Spectre here, then it's a pretty big deal for them. But I don't think they'll quite be able to get Roche due to uh, where the lanes are and the respawn timers. And they just have, like, honestly, no damage. But. So, in that respect, it's not the biggest deal, but one or two more of those could definitely make the game a lot harder. Because when Spectre has Manta, suddenly he can actually push out another wave. Pop can push out one wave quite happily, and then the whole split pushing idea is not so easy. And despite having a 4 Rax advantage, we can see the gold graph very even. They're working to find a pickup in this bottom lane. They've actually expended wards for it. If they get the Spectre, it's a pretty dang big kill. And suddenly, Pablo Gaming is rich. Yep, he so way um, more than his Rasta, though. Pardon? Uh, sorry, the uh, DK is still way poorer than the yes. Rasta due to that kill. Also sorry, I, beforehand. I got the names mixed up. My bad. The DK has been, we, we haven't touched too much on it, but the DK has been incredibly poor for this whole time. He actually won the lane in mid. But because of the grouping up, there's no farming. Yeah, he pretty much has died every time they've gotten towers or whatever, so any gain for the team was neutralized on his end, which kind of sucks, but at the end of the day, he's got his blink, and he's still very, very useful in the fights, regardless of lack of items. Now the Ice Blast has already flown out, but Spectre, the moment she's alive, has a haunt at the ready. They do have the Hand of God up, and it looks like Rasta going for the solo kill up top onto the Faceless Void. Eskil comes on in. I don't know if they have the damage with this. The haunt does come out, and Pablo immediately goes for the TP away, but they both get Chronosphered here, as well as at the same time... Oh, what just happened there? Everything paused. The Aegis was picked up by Ben. Eskil still taking quite a bit of damage, and he goes down. Alright, so that is 50 seconds when there's no Haunt, and like 30 seconds when there's no Chrono. As soon as Raster and DK spawn, that's probably not enough to do anything oh. though, because of they... lack of bots. Yeah, they Sonic Wave the Creeps, and S and Keizu's little play there on the Nature's Prophet, while Cute isn't going to get anything done for the push. 
Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, I think they can still fight through a haunt and Corona with Aegis if they just have Vinge hitting the tower with the rest of like Blink warding. By tower, I mean Rex, because there are no towers Dyer's unless you mean the tier fours. I think they're still quite happy to just go high ground here. And I think what really needs to happen here is there needs to be vision in Dyer's like this area and this area gone. so they can see them coming and they jump them before they get to the base. If the Rasta's like allowed to drop wards in base, it's a big problem. They pretty much can't let them near the high ground. If they can manage to do that and win the fight, they've prolonged the game by another five, six minutes, maybe even longer if they were but to play really safe and wait for another rush. It does honestly feel like cookies have missed their window and now sure they've got four racks down but i think we're at the point in the game where the specter can handle it a almost has an axe yeah he's actually managed to drop his farm i mean despite the witch doctor, witch -doctor. being the one who's farming more aggressively here on their supports the aa is the one who also almost already has an ags. It's looking good for cookie uh, for the puck puck. They have a hook. They have a chance. I wouldn't say it's looking really great just because of how Rasta works as a hero. He just mounts your buildings. I want to point out that the witch doctor ended up selling his drums to get the ags, which is a smart decision if it won them a fight. But unfortunately. It is still like a thousand gold down the drain. And Quop very on point. Knew exactly where the Chef Shaman was, but unable to catch him. We have a five band smoke rotation coming out from Cookies. Unless they go bottom, I don't see anyone they can catch. Oh, are they just going to go pushes in, in with the creeps, and back door protection gets broken, they can just do exactly what they're doing now and go for racks. Is a very smart decision. Yeah. Well, they've gone for it. The TP's home are coming in. They're going to drop wards. They're going to have sentries all around. They managed to turn one into a piggy. They have to be careful here. There's the chronosphere. They still haven't done much damage to the racks because of their glyph. And these wards, they're going to just get picked off here if they're not careful. They do manage to get the racks in mid lane, though. And this melee racks is getting very low with the creeps coming in and the dragon knight. I think this is megas. And they've got it. Eskil will pay with his life. But cookies, they've achieved the objective of megas. And suddenly, a lot of pressure relieved from them. Yep. Oh, and Venge is probably in a lot of trouble here. Radiance middle tower yeah, uh, as, as long as uh, they don't manage to get through a tier 2, a tier 3, and the, fa uh, the tier 4 in 20 seconds, th there's no worry. Like, there's no way they can deal with Megas. Spectre's the only one who can really push them out, she can't even sustain while doing it. Unless the witch doctor's there healing her up, so... Quite what you were saying, and I agree, like, if, if they're in a pure fighting situation, they might have even been ahead, but just because of the building situation, that's what could happen. I think... And that's all it took. Yeah, and it, it's not impossible for the Puck Puck to win, but... It's really hard to play against Mega Creeps. We don't get to see it super often because usually, oh, okay, this entire gank has been scouted. A lot of the times when folks play against Mega Creeps and win, it's honestly the majority of those games have been won in like less than 40 seconds after the Mega Creeps occurred because one team gets Mega Creeps but the other team, you know, does the final push down mid. Yeah, and in this game, if it is going to be a win, it's going to be. 30 more minutes of grinding the game out, I yeah. think. With tier 2 still up, and even a tier 1 in that bottom lane, it's very hard for the Puck Puck to find a lane to just push down. I mean, I'll be honest, I would have cheated out at this point, but if the, they do have some hope, I suppose. Void has a Vlad, so if he goes for a Maelstrom, he can push out a wave, or the Witch Doctor's okay at helping someone out. Pop can up one wave with her ult cooldown, I suppose. But it's gonna take like another five, ten minutes before you can actually deal with the waves comfortably. And then you still have to take into account any potential smoke ganks or things like this happening. Yeah, I think the Spectre's okay. 
Okay, we'll see. She is gonna get out of the trees, and yeah, she's far too fast for them to catch up to. Do you bother- do you just keep pressure on all the lanes of your cookies, or do you actually go for dropping wards inside the base? Uh, I think it depends how frustrated you get, honestly, that they're not shooting out, because it is a thing. Like, a lot of teams will make very silly mistakes trying to end the game, and they don't really need to. All they need to do is keep everything past this line, and just farm the entire map. Like, they can have one person farming their entire woods, one person farming this woods, one on Ancients, and then two people pushing out lanes, and they'll be really comfortable getting their farm, they get it next to Aegis, Master maybe gets a refresher or something, which she's already going for, and then they just go win. Yeah, it, in it is... In theory. It is something where cookies are in, very much in control of the game again, and even though they are doing some good work to keep on these creeps, you can see... Moonwells falling, effigies, well, if there were effigies, would be gone. So, what? yeah, not, not exactly big effigy users here. But at the same time, the one screwed effigies. at the same time, there is still a lot, a big lead on the Puck Puck when it comes to net worth, and a huge lead on the Puck Puck when it comes to experience. They have no level 3 ultimates yet on Cookies. Like, nobody's level 16. Versus on the Puck Puck, three people are level 16. Yeah, but your, your heroes pale in comparison at this point. Mega Creeps pretty much do all the work, and they give, like, Jackal bounty as well. So, the time it takes them to push out, let's say 15 of these waves each, they're getting so little in return. As to the entire map. Like, the net worth lead should be plummeting right now. I think it's just the fact that they're staying very grouped up and they're not like being efficient at this point. Now they've finally st decided to split up, farm different sides of the map. They probably just realized, okay, they're not GGing out. We're gonna play this seriously, not do anything stupid. We don't need to go in the game right now. It spawns in two minutes, so maybe they throw a Chen Creep in there or just use the Courier as soon as that's up. Probably be go time. Bench will have a BKB by then, if that is what she's going for. I don't see her going anything else. Dragon Knight's not particularly close to anything, though. And maybe the Refresher Orb from Rasta is what they wait for. I could see that being, like, the biggest item for the rest of the game. They kind of already got everything else that they need. Yeah, I... I mean... It... I don't think the Puck Puck is 100% out of it by any means, but it is a difficult game. Pablo is going to get caught out here. He needs backup ice... Oh, he's just going to TP into the ice floor, so Pablo will go down. The Haunt was used for that. Are they finding anybody else with this one? Steph Style gets pretty low to that, but it looks like Spectre chooses to go in onto the Venge. Does Monta off that stun and now is off and away using those drums to get out. And that's a buyback from the Rasta, so if they did want to wait for a refresher orb, that's no longer anywhere near as feasible. Yeah, a little confused there by the buyback. Obviously, they have. Oh, they're they used going alts. for it. They just want to go. It makes sense. There's no haunt. Chrono is up, but haunts a really major one for the supports. Might be a bit over anxious but they definitely can do it yep we're gonna Especially be seeing gonna them piggy out one pablo gaming he has to drop these wards he's gonna die before he can and now the chen heal comes out but it is too I late so steph style looking oh, very dead the glyph was used but the gem on the deck and there is nothing that this bench can do the racks are taking oh the ancient is about to be taking damage because their tier fours are kezu gets the tp away the chronosphere stops him and he will fall, but at the same time, the tier fours have taken a lot of damage here. Considering what they just gave up, that's 600-ish damage on the tier fours. I think it's a good they fight for to... the puck puck. Yeah, exactly. Like for what they gave up, they got so much because their income is so stagnant, as I've been saying from the creeps. But when they suddenly get like this influx of gold from the heroes, it really helps them. Stabilize the game, and 
I said they could take the fight, but they definitely can't take the fight when they do things like split up and the Rasta blinks in, doesn't drop his wards for the kill, gets greedy and wants to put them on the throne instead, and they just kind of split. I do think Honestly, it, can... it doesn't look promising if that's how they execute. I think it is important, though, to note that even taking a team fight in their own base, the Puck Puck took damage on their tier fours. And they can always go for like the all-in base play. If they die on the raster and one or two more heroes, like four or five times over, it might start to really add up. But they're still in a position where they can win the game through doing cheeky plays like what Kezu's doing now, where he's dropping wards in the base. I really don't know about dropping like the Necro book. If he gets a courier, it's yeah, definitely worth it. Almost. But... It's a lot of money on the Necro book. Experience would have been enough, I think. The tiny bit of damage, I know why he did it, but like four or five hundred gold. He gets the courier. He did do about two hundred damage to the tier fours, and you just have to keep doing that. Now the ancient itself is much harder to siege because the ancient itself takes. Roshan oh, has and of course they get the roshan oh, the map control, but the ancient does regen. But I mean, they still have to work through these tier fours, and there are a couple moon wells left up inside the base. I think they're starting to get a bit desperate, just from going for plays like that. And Do you Kessler's think cookies actually axe, need I to think. be desperate? I don't. I feel it's still no, no, very no, much in their wheelhouse. All. No, but it just it feels like desperation plays because I've been in similar situations where it's like they're not GGing out; they're actually trying to hold this. How do we actually end the game? And then you make a few sloppy plays like they've done, and then it's like, oh shit, they can actually win this game. That's probably the thought that's going through their head right now. It's like, okay, we just need to go for Roche, chill out. But they kind of already like wasted a lot of gold from the Shadow Shaman who was going for his refresher. He got stunted by like a thousand, which you know, that's three, four minutes, maybe even more for him because he's not the priority of farm. Like and the other three heroes will be wanting it a lot more than he is. Even if he does get double wards at this point, a lot of folks on the Puck Puck have really good attack speed. So I'm not sure whether his wards will survive. It's hard to focus them in a fight though when there's like everything going on that it makes a big difference when there's more heroes around. Okay. So they do manage to drop the wards. The Chronosphere goes off onto Flems. There is the blink away from Pablo, but somebody's gonna be taking nice blows. The wards are actually not focusing the tower. Chen already has fallen. Flems trying to just poke away at their buildings, trying to stay in range for the aura, I actually think, is going to fall. That's the Aegis. They've taken a tier 4 already, though, and now the other one is falling. The Ancient exposed. I don't think they have damage to do to the Ancient. But, yeah, but they got the tier 4, so next Aegis will be hopefully thrown in their minds. Is that good enough? Like, I don't know if they can take the throne. The throne is big. Yeah, yeah, like, they just need to not give anything up, keep doing what they were doing. The Radiant aren't going to feel like super ballsy all of a sudden. It's not like they can go past the river with mega creeps because there's not a lot of jump potential from the Dragon Knight, the Rasta. And who do you leave at home, right? Like, these, there isn't these one three hero have yet. To be together. The Void and the Spectre have to be on their own, pushing out waves like this. And okay, they're getting them to the river, but that's because heroes are dead and probably presuming they're regenning at this point. Now we haven't talked item pickups, of course. The uh, the Faceless Void has gotten the Aghanim Scepter, really short CD on that Chronosphere. Also a Mjolnir, because they're facing Megas. It's Regeneration. not necessarily the build anymore on Faceless Void, but it'll work here. Not sure he can bring down the DK, but we'll see. Oh, with an Ice Blast, he might be able to. He has a lot of jump here. And the Nature's Prophet ult does come out. Kira, oh, he gets it. He catches Eskil on the edge there. Is there backup around the vicinity? There's the swap from Flens. Now Kira turned into a piggy. They have the shackle coming up, but they don't manage to get it off. They do just in time. He's standing in that fire. Steph Style maybe going to go down here, but that's just a Chen. I don't know how much they care. And Quap, she's about to take a beating from these mega creeps. She does blink over to the sidelines, uses her BKB, immediate buyback, and the swap stops her from TPing. There's the stun again, standing in that ignite. That thing does so much damage. Oh no, and where did Nature's Prophet get a kill? What? I think it was just his Oh, with the ult. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, how did you murder someone over there? 
And now they're fighting with two down. They do have a buyback on the Quap. I don't think they'll go without the Rasta, but that's the last thing you want to be doing. Going for kills like that when A, the DK is like probably the tankiest hero on their lineup. He also had cheese when the AO wore off. Okay, it is Ags, but I know, think he, he takes was... that long to kill when the Void hits for like 100 each time. Not um, ideal. Viciously hoping for Mjolnir procs, I'm pretty sure. Well, he, the Quat was close enough to follow up by the end of the Chrono, so it would have been a kill. But there are four other heroes on his team to help him out. And they're probably going to be pretty close, because you saw no one was top. Obviously, Prophet can always be there. Now, this hasn't put them back too far. Despite getting a nice set of kills, the Ancient is back up to full health, and there are still four Moonwells alive in the Radiant base. But it's given them more avenues to lose the game now, because Void has no buyback. They catch Void, game over, pretty much. Of Fourth. course, they are on a timer for that. Yeah, which Roche is probably going to be in and around that time. Okay, so it's in four and a half minutes, Void, it's buyback is in five. But that's kind of unfortunate on the spawn timer, but it, honestly, I think if they kill Void, like, the rest is setting up for it now, unfortunately, I guess it's wrong. They could probably just go, because Chrono is all their setup. They really don't have much in terms of holding them down outside of it. You Girl know... Spectre can run at you with Butterfly and Radiance, but it's not going to stop you killing her buildings. Quick enough, I don't think. We'll see whether the race between the wards and the Spectre can win out. Shadow Shaman again getting close. Oh, he's going to get caught out. So Pablo Gaming getting further from that uh, refresher. Goodbye, Pablo. They need to... Doing that, I think he should have the gem. Or someone should like be scouting with him or something, because... They are just like keeping just the gem been... on the courier. I think Bad they did a, more. they did like a walkabout, and now they're putting it back. Oh no, they have two. Okay. Chen's been holding one for a long time, but I think okay, we they're one. gonna catch out the spectre in this bottom lane. Do they have the damage? She is tanky, and they are missing. They need someone to come on in with a stun or something. There's gonna be the venge swap. She has a stun in a second, and that is. Spectre down. A Blast will come through. It doesn't hit on S kill. And the Hand of God comes out first. The immediate buyback from the Spectre. She might be able to get some follow up kills here. She does haunt in. And the Quap is here. Steph Style has fallen. That's a gem on the deck. This creeps are kind of standing on top of it. And now Spectre and Quap going forwards. There's going to be the stun by S kill. He should be able to blink away. Flens very low. There's still a tier one here. Quap blinks in, uses that BKB, but the creeps hit so hard. Sonic Wave comes out, but it doesn't matter. Flens still alive. They hold. If they get the Spectre here again, this could just be a kill. But look at the return damage. That Desolate is ripping right through the members of Cookies. He's actually going to get the kill on the on Pablo. Radiance Ancient like, is under attack. and they push top. Um, Kezu's sat in the base now doing his thing. The rest of his team isn't close enough to capitalize, but they've got a hundred seconds. They just need to go heal up. Is that bots money on any of the heroes? Venge decided to buy Shadow Blade. All Doesn't of a have sudden? it, so. Oh, what were you saying? Oh. I was just saying, like, it's gonna take them a while to run down mid, so it's not gonna be a hundred seconds, it's gonna be like 20 seconds. If Void can manage to hit a Chrono and a few heroes die, or it happens, it's still not game over. All of a sudden, though, how long it takes them. there are no buybacks except on the clock, on the Puck Puck. Right, Spectre yeah, so... just bought out, Chrono, uh, Faceless Voids is still on cooldown. Right, so ideally what Clop needs to do then is bait every spell in the book. Like, just go in, like, here, pop a buyback and buy as much time as well, I said it's not going to be that much time. They actually moved pretty quicker than I thought they would, and 40 seconds with your phone exposed. But you can't be sitting back here, you need to be doing something. Kezu pops up those necro books again. Quap uses the Sonic Wave. The A Blast is actually not going to be used on creeps, so they have gotten about a fourth of the Ancient down. We're approaching 
A third, the quap pops her BKB. Oh gosh, I don't know what the Witch Doctor was doing, but standing there, Ghost Scepted in the Ignite was not it. Gem drops to the ground. Kezu just using that BKB now to poke away at it. They do land a nice Chronosphere, but no, Kiro unable to do any damage in it. And now Kezu swapped out so he can keep pounding away. The Glyph is popped. They've blown up the Chrono, uh, the Faceless Void. I think this is it. Quap, she tries to fight, and GG's are called. That was fairly admirable hold, honestly. Surprised they stayed in that long. Yeah, really well played. I mean, the Puck Puck, it's a push lineup. They did manage to somewhat stall the Death Ball. They just didn't have enough, as it turned out. But still, I think, well played from them. A little bit of tweaking on the early game, and I think they could have won that one. Yeah, they just set up for a very specific way of defending, and it only works in... I don't know, a certain percentage of games. It's not a foolproof draft by any means. When you pick lineups that are pretty much 100% centered around Chronosphere, things are going to go wrong when you miss one or, you know, the void gets picked off and then you lose all your towers. Yeah. So, so if they just draft like something a bit more stable, maybe get, I don't know, Alina or something mid instead as D push of the Quap would offer a very similar amount of damage health, something like Puck or just anything like that as deep push instead in that game, and I think that game would have been like a lot easier to execute. It would have definitely been a different game. Either way, folks, with that game one closes out, Cookie's taking the win. We will be right back with game two. We've got a short break between them as the players all get into the next lobby, and we'll see you then. I'm Llama Down Under. You can find me by that name on Twitter and Twitch, and I'm joined by PQMZ, who doesn't social media. See you shortly.